Two teams giving themselves opportunities. Pair of teams with no hopes left at all for the NCAA tournament. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horwitz. Glad to be with you on Wednesday's edition of Bubble Watch. And remember, it's not just one game as it seems when you get to this week, but a lot of teams have put themselves in spots where they have to keep winning to get opportunities. And a couple of long shots just didn't get those. UConn and Charlotte both expectingly needed very long runs in the Big East and Atlantic 10 tournaments, respectively. But both one and done. And now it's just a question of if either or both will be in the NIT. However, Seton Hall, Rhode Island, and Dayton bubble survivors, not in convincing fashion Tuesday night, but all adhering to the motto, survive in advance. The Pirates nearly blew all of a 29-point second half lead. The Flyers needed a late surge to beat GW, while the Rams struggled for a while with 12-seeded St. Joe's before advancing to Friday's quarters. But those wins all providing opportunities, which is all any bubble team can ask. Start in the Big East, where Wednesday's second round will provide a lot of insight, maybe none bigger than this one, the Pirates and the Fighting Irish. Numbers very similar. Seton Hall, no bad losses. Notre Dame, four consecutive wins against RPI top 60 teams, three of those against the top 50. But what would happen if the Pirates beat the Irish in their second of two games this season? That's on the line. Winner moves on in that game to play Pittsburgh, a team that both have beaten this season. Meanwhile, Georgetown's in, but South Florida could move itself back into the observation with a second win this season against the Hoyas and then would improve its strength of schedule by playing Syracuse again. Not much doubt with Marquette, but RPI not great, so make sure to beat St. John's. Meanwhile, Louisville's two wins against Syracuse probably have the team as safe, but wouldn't help to lose to 11 seed Cincinnati. I mentioned the A-10 first round games. Those were on the higher seeds home courts. Tournament moves to Atlantic City for the quarterfinals. Doesn't start till Friday. St. Louis and Rhode Island, both bubble squads in most people's opinion. So that's a great opportunity for both. More so for the Billikens since their strength of schedule, not very good. A Dayton win over Xavier would go a long way as well. Championship game in the A-10 Sunday on CBS. Something else Tuesday night to point out would certainly help those bubble teams and others no upset in the Horizon League Championship. Wright State wasn't going to get in without the automatic berth. Butler certainly was. And the Bulldogs with their 25-point win kept the spot open. Also probably helped their seeding. Bulldogs will enter the NCAA tournament on a 20-game winning streak, the longest in the nation. Now, the Northeast Conference, the Big Sky Conference tonight, they'll play their finals. No bubble impact there with any of those squads. Meanwhile, the Big 12 and Pac-10 tournaments begin. So, too, do Conference USA and the Mountain West. But the teams in those conferences that we'll need to address, the entire top of the Pac-10, Memphis, UAB, San Diego State, they don't get going until Thursday. So, we'll talk about those teams tomorrow. Remember to check Jerry Palm's projected field each day here on CBSSports.com. And don't forget, when the brackets do come out Sunday on CBS, we'll have the live bracket breakdown right here on CBSSports.com beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern. Gary Parrish and I will look at each region. We'll try and determine where you can see the biggest upsets, who may go the furthest, all right here on CBSSports.com. But until tomorrow, enjoy this week because, frankly, folks, it's really a lot of fun. I'm Jason Horwitz. Take care.